So this is the tag database. Uh, you can always get to the tag database by clicking on the tags folder in the project information window or by clicking on the tag base up here, define tag database. So tags provide an organized method of tracking all memory addresses used in a project. They're much more descriptive of functionality than the name of the memory address, and they are easily edited should you need to change the name of the tag or the address associated with that tag. They can also be exported and imported into other Mapware 7000 projects, regardless of what model you've chosen. And then once defined, the tag name can be used throughout the project to refer to a particular register without needing to remember the memory address. In Native Ladder, which is what we're using, tags are defined to a specific memory address within the HMC's memories. These addresses are grouped into different spaces according to how the tag is intended to be used. Examples include D registers or data registers, B registers or single bit registers, SW and S registers, these are the system registers, and then the IO registers like I just spoke about, the X, Y, and M registers. So within this tag database we have a filtering option. Um, you can hide system tags if you don't want to be looking at those. You can also hide unused tags. In this case, we haven't used any anywhere, so that would get rid of everything. You can look for only bit addresses. These are all bits. You can look at register bits. So these are all addresses that are pointing at a bit within a word register. Or you can look at full registers. You can also look for read-only bits. If you had any other nodes, you could look for external nodes, and then the default versus user-defined. We need to add some tags to our project. You can do this by right-clicking and going Add from this menu, from over here, or by clicking this button up here. This brings up the Add Tag window. So the fields in this add tag window, and this is the node name. Again, if you had an external PLC that you were communicating with, it would show up in, in this dropdown. Here's where you enter a name for your tag. You determine where in memory it's going to be stored. We are going to be using some data registers. This is a good listing of all the different types of memory that exist within the HMC. At first we're going to create some register tags. We will create some bit or coil addressed tags later. You can create multiple tags at once if you want to. If you were going to auto add and create 20 tags with basically the same name and just a number appended after that, you could. And then uh, you choose the length of the tag. All the data registers are two bytes in length, but you can choose to create a tag that's only referring to one byte of that word, either the low byte or the high byte. This would just take up one register at a time. We're actually going to make some tags that use four bytes. And so they're going to use uh, two registers for every tag. Let's make some tags. Raw input int. So raw input int is going to be a four byte tag at address D0. This is the tag that we are going to move the raw data from our analog input into. We click add. And up here, the tag appears in the database. So the tag number, not super important. It's automatically assigned. You can't do anything with it. Tag name, which we have just created, the length and bytes of the tag. It is read and writable. The address is D zeros. And it's a user-defined tag. The add tag window won't go away until you hit close. So you can add multiple tags. Uh, next tag is going to be raw input float. We want this tag to be created at D2, um, but I'm going to show you what happens real fast if you forget to change your address. Tag already present. So you can't have two tags referencing the same uh, memory address. Not allowed. So we'll increment by two and add. So raw input float appears in the tag database. Next up is raw low, increment address by two, 
and add. Increment by two. Once we get to disable scaling, this is actually going to be a bit address and we're going to put it in the internal coils. That's going to give it a B address. And so this one will be assigned to B0. And enable limits will have address B1. And so these are all the initial tags that we're going to add. Um, we will be creating some more tags later within the logic but these are the starting tags. So we're going to hit close. So raw input int is going to hold the raw input data and we're going to convert that raw data into a floating point number. These next four tags are going to be used in the scaling function. Raw low is the lowest value that the input can be and raw high is the highest input value. Engineering low and engineering high will be the range that we're going to be scaling it to. So input range, output range. Uh, scaled input is going to be that output from the scaling function. The high limit and low limit are going to determine whether or not our, our input that we're getting is within a predefined range. And so now that we have defined some tags, we're going to initialize them. There are two locations that you can initialize tasks or functions or tags. The first is within a logic block. There is, you can create a power up logic block. And this piece of logic will only run once at power up. I'm going to delete that because we don't actually want that. We're going to do it in a task. And so there are power on tasks that are, again, run just once at startup when the unit first powers on and then never run again. You can also create global tasks that will happen continuously. So we're going to create some power on tasks to initialize some variables. All right, so we're going to write a value to a tag and we want to select the raw low tag. You can scroll down to the bottom of this dropdown. Uh, basically, as you add tags, they'll get added to the bottom because that's how it works. So we could select raw low there or this ellipse button will open up the select tag dialog box. And this can be a lot more convenient because you've got your filters. So we could filter to just user defined and we only want registers. But anyways, we've got raw low as selected here. You can double click it to select it or click OK. And we're going to select float as the data type and click add. And so it's been added to the power on tasks, right zero to tag raw low. You can copy it. And if you really wanted to, you could paste it over here. And we don't actually want this to be continually written. So we're just going to delete it and go back over here and select power on task again, because we're not actually done with our power on tasks. And let's make another one, right value to tag. So that was raw low. Let's grab raw high. And we're going to write 65535. And this is going to be a float again. Click add. And let's change this number to engineering low. So the engineering low is zero leave it at float because all, all of these variables are four bytes long and floats are four bytes long. We want to make sure that we have the length of the tag correct that's getting written here. And then we're going to do engineering high. The high for the engineering value is five because we're scaling it to be between zero and five because it is a zero to five volt input. 
add high limit. We are setting the high limit to be 4.5. So basically we're going to end up turning on a bit if our input is over 4.5 volts. And then low limit will be 0.5. So again, we'll set on a different bit uh, or output if the uh, input value is under half a volt. And now we've got our power on tasks that are initializing all those tags that we just created.